Hey guys, Spencer Sack right here, and today we're gonna to talk about lighting. Specifically, I wanna talk about um, the trend I kinda of see on YouTube, which is people usually buying something like an Aperture 120D and the light dome that comes with that and using that to light all their shots. Well, now that's a great way to start lighting your shots. But I wanna talk about some other lighting techniques that will make your light a little bit more natural and quote unquote cinematic. You know, something that makes it look more like it would be in a movie and not just something that like you actually put up a light and lit the shot. You know, a lot of times when you're shooting commercials um, or films or something like that, you're, you're going to wanna to have the light look like it's motivated from a real light coming into the room and not something that just is lit on purpose. Now, if you look at someone's work, kind of like Roger Deakins, you'll notice that you can never really tell if he's lit the shot or not. Everything looks super natural and it helps you stay in the story, not disconnect from the story and know that you're watching a movie. So in this video, we're gonna talk about some techniques that can help you um, better make natural lighting and not just use an Aperture 120D in a softbox. So the reason your light tends to not look so natural when you're going to light a shot is because the light isn't soft enough. The reality is when you turn on a light in your house or in a room, it's gonna bounce all over the place and it's gonna create a bigger light source and look a little bit softer on your subject. So in order to create a soft light source, you're gonna want your light to be as relatively big as possible to your subject. This means even a small light source pushed very close to a subject can create a softer light. But the usual problem is that you need to get the source big but not end up in the frame of the shot. So we're going to want to make the source bigger as we pull it farther away from the subject in order to keep that relative size large. So an Aperture 120D in a softbox, those light domes are usually like 36 inches wide. So you have a 36 inch light here, but it's pretty close to your subject, then it's gonna be fairly soft. But when you're getting to light in a, in a commercial or in a cinematic environment, you're gonna probably have more wide shots and you're gonna wanna move around the room more, but you're gonna want more freedom when shooting that scene. So the trick is to get the biggest light source possible to start with, um, so the light is always relatively soft throughout the shooting day. So take this scenario for instance, I'm actually using a large window right now to light this shot and I don't have any other lights on in the room. So obviously it's gonna look natural because I'm just using a window, but I did this very specifically. I put myself in a very specific spot, but I have two sets of shades here that I can close or open to better control the shot. So I'm only opened the shades on this side of my loft and not this side. So I'm letting this side get darker and I'm only creating a light from here. And I'm only using the light source from this part here because it's gonna spill on the background a little bit. It's gonna be a really nice big source and it's also gonna hit my face, but it's gonna give us some nice fall off over here because we don't have any other light source on this side of the room. Now we can easily recreate this in any shooting scenario. We just need to use the right tools to get the job done. Now, unfortunately, an Aperture 120D in a softbox is only 36 inches wide, so it's not gonna be able to get this big, nice, soft source that looks natural in the room because it's only 36 inches wide. You're probably gonna wanna start somewhere between four foot and six foot, and ideally you'd wanna go to eight foot or 12 foot to get the softest, most even light. So I was able to borrow a little studio over the weekend and I set up um, just one light in this room and I modified it in different ways so you can see the different softness on my face. So in this first shot, you can see just an aperture 120D. It's very, it's fairly close to my face, just close enough that it's out of frame. Now it looks pretty decent. It's pretty soft on my face, but you can see some harsh shadows on the background. And it definitely looks like I threw up a light and put it in front of a subject. It kind of looks like an interview lighting setup and you can tell that someone lit the shot. So in this next shot, we're just gonna back the light off a little bit more as if we were trying to get a little bit wider on the subject. And you can see that now the, the light is even getting less soft on my face and the shadows are getting harsher and it looks even more unnatural. So let's use a different technique to get the light softer and look more natural on my face. So the quickest and most easy way to get a nice soft light in the room and something that looks a little bit more natural is literally just to turn your light away from the subject and bounce it off of a wall or the ceiling. This is gonna quickly take that little light and it's gonna bounce it into the ceiling and when it comes back, it's gonna be a wider source. Now you are gonna lose some intensity on your light when you do this because you're, technically the light output is farther away from the subject, but you are gonna get a softer source which will look more natural. Now, if you don't have something like a nice wall or something close to the subject in your scene, you're going to want to just diffuse the light properly, shooting it directly at the subject. So now you've seen me use this modifier before on this channel. It's a six by six quarter grid. So it's a, it's a type of fabric that you can shoot light through in order to soften it before it hits your subject. And so if your light source is around this big when it's coming out of the light, when it hits that piece of fabric, it's gonna expand throughout the fabric and now your new light source is actually gonna be the fabric and not the light itself. So six by six, six feet by six feet, that's gonna be a fairly large source that's gonna feel more like a window or some sort of natural light coming in from outside. 
And this can definitely work if you're just using it as a tungsten practical as well. The only downside is that usually that tungsten practical is not gonna spread around the room as much. So you're gonna probably gonna wanna flag off the sides and get the light from not spilling all over the room so it looks more focused on your subject. These are both really good places to start if you wanna create a more natural light. But if you wanna make it look even softer, you can always double diffuse it. Now you can double diffuse it by adding another layer of diffusion. But if you don't have multiple pieces of diffusion, you can use one of my favorite techniques, which is what is called a book light. So you're gonna take your light source and you're gonna bound it off of a soft white surface, then let that bounce back through the six by six quarter grid or some other piece of diffusion, and then hit your subject. So you're getting two points of contact that are gonna take that light and diffuse it and make it even wider. Once again, you're gonna lose quite a bit of intensity on your light when you do this, so you're gonna need a little bit brighter light when you decide to use this technique. So you can see the effect of a book light here compared to the Aperture 120D. You can tell on my face that the light is falling off in a much nicer gradient across my face and there's less harsh shadows. And then even look at the background. The background has a little bit less intensity of the light hitting the walls and also there's less strong shadows on the background, so it just looks more even and natural. So let's jump into my loft and light a little scene to better illustrate how you can use a couple of these lighting techniques in order to make something look more natural in a cinematic environment. So in the scene, my wife walks in, she's picking out a record and she's putting it on the turntable and turning it on. A couple things to notice right when we're walking into the scene is that there's white walls everywhere. So that could be a good thing if I want to bounce the light, but what, I'll, what you're also going to notice is that the light is going to bounce off those white walls and it's going to be a little bit harder to control. So when I start off lighting a wide shot, I'm usually going to want to have my light source kind of farther away from the subject because it'll be in the frame otherwise. So for the wide shot, I took an Aperture 120D and I placed it over by my cabinets and the ceiling and I shot it into that at full power. Now I put it on the opposite end of the face that I was shooting on because I usually like to shoot into the shadow side of the face. And then I just let that light spill across the room on this side of the loft and it looks like there's some sort of lamp or something coming from the kitchen. So if I just would have turned that light around and just shot it right at the wall, it would have been super harsh and definitely looked like I put a light there. But because the light is bouncing all over the place, it looks much more natural. It's something that you're going to see in reality because light tends to scatter all over the place in reality. So then when we move into the close-up of her hands picking out an album, this gives us the opportunity to bring the light in closer and make it as soft as possible. So for this, I actually took the shades in my loft and I rolled them down and I took the light and I shot it into the shades and then through a six by six quarter grid. So we're creating the book light that we talked about earlier. So we're getting double diffused light that's super, super soft. And then the quarter grid is actually really close to her hands, which makes it even softer. But you notice once you balance out the levels, these two shots match almost perfectly, even though the light is in a completely different place. But it seems like it's coming from a similar part of the room as being motivated by the same light source. And I really didn't have to change the light around too much more to make this work. So when I moved in even closer, you know, I had to like make sure that there wasn't any shadows hitting the white wall or that would look totally unnatural. And so I just had to kind of tweak the grid a little bit each time and tweak the, push the light in different directions just a little bit just to better change the direction of the light and make it look nice on my subjects. Now, if I just would have thrown up an Aperture 120D or 300D with a light dome, um, there would have been some positives to that. Definitely because the light dome has black up around the sides of it, it's a more directional light, so you're gonna have less spill all over the room, so you have more control of the light. But it's not gonna be as soft, and it's definitely gonna look more sourcey, so it's gonna look like it's coming from a source that we put in the room, thus being less natural. So when I go to approach lighting on a set, I tend to just try to look, make the light look as natural as possible, but still add a nice definition and shape to the scene. Really, this is just a big game of problem solving. It's always kind of looking for ways to keep your light soft, but still have control over the light and give it direction. Now you do need multiple light stands and more of a setup when you're using bigger pieces of diffusion like that. I mean, that's where something like a light dome has become so handy for most creators because it's just one light, one stand, it all goes together and you have a quick, soft light. So there might be some alternatives if you don't want to deal with multiple pieces of diffusion. You could still use a softbox, but I would just recommend getting a much bigger softbox. There's a lot more companies out there that make much 
bigger soft boxes that might be more versatile for you. Those will just keep your light source nice and large no matter what the situation is. But personally, I don't really like traveling with a light dome. Um, if you're going to set it up at different locations, you kind of have to take a couple of the, the wires out to flatten it so it'll fit in your car. But if you're using something like a six by six grid, it literally just folds up and goes into a bag because it's just a piece of fabric. Yes, you're gonna need one more stand to set it up, but you're gonna probably have light stands with you anyways. So it's not really that big of a deal. It's really just about taking these techniques and applying it to whatever you have at your disposal or whatever tools that you brought to the set. Now, these are just a few techniques that will help you make your light look more natural. Of course, you can start lighting the background as well in different ways and using negative fill or shades in the room to start controlling the light in the background to give it that more um, natural look. But this is just the first place to start when you're talking about your key light. Well, this is a video I wanted to make for a while now. I think it's something that it's good to have a baseline. So when you watch the, a lot of my other videos going forward, when I'm recreating scenes or showing off a camera, you'll better know what I'm talking about when I'm lighting those scenes. And this is something that I think that you'll find super helpful going forward. And when I started shooting video and getting into lighting, I didn't know anything about it. But once I figured out these techniques, it was so much easier to quickly problem solve on set and to get the light the way I wanted it to be. Well, I hope this lighting tutorial was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer those the best I can. Um, and until next time, guys, I'm Spencer Sakurai. See ya.